say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Backyard. That's right. It's finally nice out. You know what? It, it is kind of nice out, but it's going to get cold tonight. Really cold. But this is the in last just an cold. hour or so. This is it. Like 30. Wow. Uh, this cold. winter just won't leave, but I think it's I think it's on its way out. Tonight we're going to open because a lot of people have been saying that they really like to see our animals mm -hmm. and, and what's going on on the farm. Uh, All the dogs are happy tonight. They're checking out, see what's going on. We're getting ready to open them up a bigger field. Mm -hmm. But here's what we do on almost a daily basis. Uh, the girls are getting tired of their hay. Right. We're going to eventually fence this whole area here for them, but I let them out. So they free range. And they stay around. They yeah. stay around. And at night, when it starts to get dark, they go right back in yeah. and I put the fence up. If not, I shake a bucket of corn. Right. But they, look at them. They know. Did you hear them? <laughs> they want green grass. And there's plenty of it right, right. now. So we're going to open the gate, let them out. They stay right around that area. Mm -hmm. We'll let them out for a couple hours until they get their bellies full. You'll start seeing them lay down. When it gets dark, they want to come in. So let's let them out for a little bit. It is going to get warm at some point. Yes. And, you know, people have asked to see more smoking, barbecuing, grilling. When it gets warm, you want to do that. Right. Now, we're never going to lay off our cowboy cook. And, in fact, if it wasn't so late, we'd be cowboy cooking tonight. But we got some, we got some good stuff coming up in just a little while. But we're getting this area fixed up. So, you know, when we cook on the patio, mm -hmm. like we do in the summertime, you're going to see this is a backdrop. We're going to have waterfall back here. Nice. So when we're cooking, it's going to be nice and pretty and all our grilling and smoking and barbecuing and things that we're going to be doing shortly. I look forward to that. It's going to be fun. It needs to warm up, though. Yes, it does. And I think by this coming week, it's going to be really nice. Good. And we're not going to eat those fish. That's right. They're cute. No matter how good they look. Let's talk about what we're making tonight. This is an old recipe. Right. Now, we have got this problem about when we travel and we go neat places, we always check out the food culture. Yeah. Now, way back when I started being friends with Raoul Dupree, mm -hmm. the most amazing man in the world, I must say, French chef who took me under his wing, taught me all kinds of secrets and sauces in French cooking. He told me to pay attention to wherever I went to look at the food, and you'll right. always learn something. And you can. You know, we've right. had... Greek folks on, you remember Maria? Mm -hmm. Maria Bell? Love her. Yeah, I love her fish recipe. Just, everybody we talk to, everything's gone to food now. Right. Because this is what we do for a living. But we recently traveled to Germany, Austria, Hungary, the Czech Republic, so on and so forth. And it was all about the food. Mm -hmm. Now, their history goes way back. Right. You know, in the United States, it's a couple hundred years. You know, you go around a, a turn river, there's a castle up on the hill, and that's right. where Richard the Lionheart was kept yeah. for a ransom until they paid a bunch of right. silver to turn him loose. So we got there and we immersed ourselves in the food culture because a lot of what happened there came here. Right. Everybody in the United States is from somewhere else. And recently we did a story on the German influence on Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati. Well, here we were in Germany and in Austria and every restaurant we ate at was just fantastic. Oh, and the coffee was wonderful, amazing, compared to ours. It was, it was, it was, it was cream or something, wonderful. every one of them was wonderful. So we paid attention to food. We wanted to bring you home some things that we learned. Right. And so let's talk about strudel, apple strudel. Now, this is something everybody's fixed or fixed something like. The combination mm -hmm. of ingredients in this are something that are very widely used in kitchens today. Right. But that old influence. Now, these, mm -hmm. this recipe goes back to the 1600s, 1700s. Yeah. But there are, there are actually older than that recipes that were, you know, from 12, 1300. This particular recipe you're going to do tonight was 1600s. Right. It's one of the best things we have ever put in our mouth and simple. Mm -hmm. Now, we watched somebody demonstrate 
cooking it, they actually take all these ingredients and they roll it up on a piece of cloth right. and roll it into shape. How smart. And they put vinegar in stuff. That makes it's, the dough more yes, pliable. Yes, and they rolled it and it was amazing. I learned some Beautiful. stuff. Yeah. So we're going to do that tonight. Now we're going to get our dessert started first. Trust me on this. Nothing we're doing is hooty tooty or fancy smancy. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely home cooking by folks who did this right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I didn't realize how simple they were. Simple and delicious. I'm, 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 yeah. But you I know, you go over there, the food culture is, is so in depth. Mm -hmm. The pork. We ate along the river there under the castle in, in um, Chesky Krumlov. Right. And we got these little pork medallions. You got the fish. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely some of the best food we've ever had. And we got entertained by music. Always had music playing around music us. Music all the time, <laughs> everywhere. And puppets, marionettes, mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. One followed us home. It's it pretty did. scary. It's your favorite one, isn't it? <laughs> pretty scary. But anyhow, let's make the strudel. Later on, this is interesting. I was in the store, mm -hmm. and I was shopping, and a woman came up and said, we watch every show. She said, what's going to be on next week? I said, well, I'm getting ingredients right now. And I said, Wiener schnitzel. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you know what that is? And I've even asked this question to people who, who are foodies. I didn't know what it was. They think it's a brat or That's some, what I some, kind, of, some right. kind of sausage. Right. Think the best chicken fried steak you've ever had. Now these old, old, old things, I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you more about this later. It's fried mm -hmm. in lard. Think chicken Our fried lard. steak. Right. We'll go there later, but let's, let's get the strudel started. Okay, this particular recipe is from a handwritten recipe from right. the 1600s. And I'm following it exact. Exactly. I have my, I have my little recipe right here. All right. And what we're going to do first is we're going to get warm water. It's got to be about 80 degrees at least, but a quarter cup of water and one and a half tablespoons extra, one and three quarter tablespoons of sunflower oil, which I haven't used before. I like that. Half a teaspoon of vinegar, one eighth teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to stir all this together. And one cup to start of flour and then two and a half tablespoons. And we're going to use that and that's going to be our dough we're going to make. And I'm just going to keep stirring this until I have to use my hands. I can't stir anymore. This was popular during the Habsburg era. All the fancy smancies in Vienna love this recipe. This was good. We had some of this. It's there. delicious. It's probably one of the best things I've had in a while, dessert wise. And it's so simple. All right, I'm going to go ahead and knead this for probably 10 minutes. Then I'm going to put oil all over it, put it in the bowl, cover it with some wrap, and let it sit for one hour. Gotcha. And if we need to, you can make this ahead of time, it says on the directions, and let it sit for two to three days. And just bring it out to room temperature. Let it get room temperature? Yeah. Now we're just going to use a little flour, and I've never done my dough like this before. You just do it on how smart on a cloth. Yeah. On a cloth, I like it. We're going to roll this out as thin as we can. They really did too. They rolled it out and rolled it out and rolled it out and rolled it out. They did. So keep that in mind. So we have the dough. Now we're going to make our filling for inside. So we're going to take half a cup of sugar. A quarter cup of, it says walnuts, but we use pecans. Mm -hmm. We're going to chop those up, and I chopped them up already in my little chopper. Then we're going to do a third a cup of raisins, a half a teaspoon of lemon zest. Now, I'm not harping on anything, but if you're, you're going to use lemon zest, really wash your lemon good, or get organic if you can. A teaspoon of cinnamon, and then two or three Granny Smith apples. I got three apples. We're going to cut those, and then I'm going to chop those up in my chopper too. Now, again, if you hear a funny noise in the background, somebody talking or whistling is our African Grey, and she's rolling tonight. Pandora. Yeah. She's precious. All right, I'm going to do my apples. Here's your melted butter. Thank you. Two tablespoons. You could do a brush, but we're just gonna, I'm just gonna use the same spoon I used to stir it. It's all going the same place. That's right. And now, we need some breadcrumbs. Why do you think they do this? I'm not sure if it's for texture or... I'm not asking questions. Okay. Because it's been around longer than me, about a couple of years. And now we're gonna go ahead and just put our mixture in there. All right, now the interesting thing about this is they let the towel or the piece of cloth. They had like a sheet. Do the rolling. So basically you lift the cloth and let it roll itself. How about that? They actually just rolled it on the pan too, I think, like this. You want me to do that? You can. Let the, let the cloth do the work for you. Oven, is it 350? For 30 minutes. 30 minutes and you're good to go. If you want to put a little butter on top to brown that or it wouldn't hurt anything with it. No.
We've got a lot of viewers who like cabbage. Cabbage is an old timey thing. Right. But you know what, folks over there, they utilize cabbage. Mm -hmm. and a lot folks of stuff. here utilize cabbage. Remember Bobby Joe showing us how to bury that? Is yeah, that not that cool was and old fashioned? Mm -hmm. And they would keep it like that all winter long. So we're going to take our red cabbage, which is served all the time in good German dishes. And if you'll hold that mandolin, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to. We're not going to use a whole head here because it's just you and I. And Kelly probably eats some too. She likes cabbage. She likes cabbage. Let's see where we're at. Ooh, we're getting there. Look at that. Beautiful, uniform. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take an apple. Okay. Let's go ahead and core that. Peel it. Now, you know when I make sauerkraut, mm -hmm. remember Lois's? Right. One jar at a time, delicious stuff. What I always put in my sauerkraut? Apples. I like to sweeten it up just a little bit. You like your apples. What else do I put in it? I put a little beer. That's right. And some caraway seed. I love that like this. So we're going to put a little apple in this to sweeten it up just a bit. And that's when you taste red cabbage along with a good German dish, you'll notice that sweetness in there. And it's mm -hmm. usually an apple. There you go. All right, now if you will, let's cut some onion up. Okay. All right, now we're going to take our pan over the stove. We're going to saute the apples and onions until the onions are done. Once the onions are done, then we're going to take a third a cup of vinegar, a third a cup of sugar. We're going to cut up some bacon. We're going to put the cabbage right in on top of that. We're going to stir it up a little bit. We're going to take, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a tablespoon of salt, and about a third of pepper. And we're going to put that in the oven at 350, along with everything else, for about an hour. What do you think? Just got that out of the I oven? I wish everybody could smell that. Look at that. That looks delicious. Yeah, right there. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. The strudel is cooling. The cabbage is cooking. Yeah. And we got some potatoes. Just basically new potatoes, mm -hmm. peeled in butter. Just soaked them in salt butter. Salt and pepper yeah. and fresh parsley. Ooh, that comes on almost every plate over there. Or yeah. French fries. Yeah, French fries are with everything. French fries with steak, with everything. Or they would have dumplings, which look like little pieces of bread. They had potato dumplings. Oh, those are good. I'm telling you what, Yum. it's fantastic. Now, we're gonna take our veal, which you can buy in cutlets. Now, if you're thinking, now what are they making? It's hootie tootie and I don't want any part of that. You think chicken fried steak, the best you ever had. Mm -hmm. now, you can do this with pork, you can do this with chicken, but I recommend the veal. Now, we've talked about lard, and we've talked about lard in its purest form. We just found some leaf lard yes. that we didn't know we had, because I was about more. to run out that we found in the freezer. That is good mm -hmm. for you. It is. Good for you. Well, they fry Omega theirs in pork fat. Everything's in pork fat over there. Pork fat. Now, here's the cool part. Schnitzel is basically a piece of meat that's flattened out and then fried with breading. Okay. Now, this goes way back to the Romans. The Romans were doing this way, way, way back. Italy, they were doing mm -hmm. this. So when they try to look up the history of this, they say, well, was it Austria? They said maybe a little more north into Italy and so on and so forth. So we can tenderize that too. But as I was saying, I got sidetracked a minute ago, the Wiener, mm -hmm. the part that confuses people. You know what the Wiener is? I didn't know, I thought it was sausage. Vienna. Okay, I didn't know that. Vienna schnitzel. Okay. Now, in Austria, if you get Wiener schnitzel, by law, it has to be veal. If it's chicken schnitzel or pork schnitzel, yeah. they have to have specify. All right, now we've got our duck eggs. We're gonna take these, this is farmer. I'm going to crack those. Love duck eggs. In fact, our ducks are keeping us so loaded with eggs, we get rid of our chickens. We'll yeah. give them to Johnny Wagner. So here's the process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to rub just a little bit of sunflower oil. Now, we saw this done by one of the top chefs over mm -hmm. there. So we're going to take just a little sunflower oil after we salt and pepper it. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Yum. After we salt and pepper, we're gonna put just a little sunflower oil on that. That's gonna make the flour adhere to that. After we dump it in the flour, we're gonna dip it in the egg and double dip it in the breadcrumbs. That'll pick Yum. that up. Now, you can either get a veal cutlet and you can cut your little thin pieces off of that or sometimes you can find the pre-sliced stuff. Talk to your butcher, go to your favorite meat store, see what they can do for you. We're gonna get our lard going. And we're gonna get, I don't know, probably about a half inch. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kind of float it in that hot lard. Oh. 
tell me that's not a country beautiful looking plate of food right there. This is some of my favorite food now. I'm telling you, it's hard to beat. I'll put you a little bit of Thank apricot you. jelly on there. Mmm. Mm. That was so a easy. lemon on there. That is so oh. good. Taste this cabbage. It tastes like my great grandmother's kitchen. <laughs> Yummy. Isn't that delicious? That's really good. And then you just soak these in butter? Just new potatoes, butter, salt and pepper, and parsley. Mm. And that's what the plates look like over there. This is a restaurant in the Czech Republic. There's a picture of me with a dark beer. That was just for looks. I didn't drink it. Right. <laughs> beer was cheaper than water. You had to buy water. The beer was 50 cents. Now, the water was $2.50. Yeah. That was a plate of pork medallions that we talked about earlier. Wow, just delicious. Right, delicious. This cabbage is blowing my mind. Try this, people. I mean, just absolutely delicious. You know, we let, met a lot of nice people, too, while we were mm -hmm. there. From all over the United States. Pennsylvania, California, Carolina. It was just a wonderful trip. And we learned so much about mm -hmm. food. You know, everything that here, that was brought here, has got a history way beyond this country. Right. Wow. You can oh cut this goodness. with your Are fork. Are you kidding me? This cuts with your fork. You don't need a knife. Remember, you can do this pork or you can do the chicken. Mm -hmm. Schnitzel, again, is a pressed flattened piece of meat that's breaded and fried. All right, now, speaking of that, we're gonna come back to this in a minute because I don't want that to get too cold. Let's go ahead and slice this and see Cut what right this down the like. middle. Go right ahead, because we're gonna eat this in no time flat. Let's make it my mouth water, because I know what this is gonna taste like. How's it look? Well, it looks delicious. Look at that. Just look at that right there. Yeah. Just absolutely beautiful. Mm. 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 The raisins, the lemon, that's delicious. You know what, <laughs> this is a really good meal. I would really like for you to try this. Try some grub you've never tried before. This is not outside of anything that mm -hmm. no, you wouldn't have on a good Sunday afternoon anyway. Right. This is amazing. amazing. That is almost silly, it's so good. Yeah. You know what, that's a wrap. But a lot of people, this time of year, are preparing their gardens. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember way back, one of the first shows we did before you would even come on camera. Okay. This has never been on KET. We're getting some seed trays going because gardening season is right around the corner. Now, as I remember when I was a kid, we always had a garden. And I remember the ladies from church coming over and I remember all them gathering around and we'd have, we'd be snapping beans and they'd be freezing corn, canning and all that kind of fun stuff. And I hated it. And I hated working in the garden, I hated hoeing in the garden, but you know what? As I've gotten older, I find myself going back to the old ways and I really, really enjoy it. I don't know what's happened to me. So I've got a starter tray here. Some of them have little pieces of, it's almost like a peat moss, and when you put moisture in it, it expands. You can just kind of bust it up, put warm water in it. And the important thing here is, is not to get it too wet. I'm gonna drop some seeds in, and on the back of most of your seed bags, you'll have a little chart to show you, a little picture of the United States to show you what zones you're in, and it'll usually say when to plant it, how many weeks before you actually plan to put them out. Now we know that we can be prone to frost pretty late here in Kentucky, but I'm going to go ahead and get everything started. Now the important thing is, once I put my seeds in here, I'm not going to directly put it in the light. I'm going to cover it up. I may even put newspaper over the top of it and set it aside, not a real wet, well-lit area. I'm going to keep checking on When I see something starting to sprout, then I'm going to put it in the light and let it get some, let it get as much sun as it possibly can. I'm going to put it out in our atrium, which faces the south, once they get up and rolling. And I'm going to put a humidifier out there to make sure I got plenty of moisture in the air. All right, let me get some more water and I'm going to get all these ready to go. I'm going to take these trays and I'm going to put my cabbage and my basil. I'm going to put half of it cabbage, half of it basil, because I like my cabbage. I'm going to open my basil seeds up. Now I've got this soil nice and moist. All right, I'm going to take my little basil seeds and put them out right here where I can see them. 
look like little poppy seeds. Now I'm going to take a couple. I'm going to put two or three in each one. Now I'm going to come back and I'm just going to put like an eighth of an inch of dirt over top of that. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece of package that says sweet basil on. I'm going to mark this over here. I'm going to take just, now this is again your starting mix. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of that, about an eighth of an inch over that. You don't want to put too much or it'll prevent it growing. Just enough to cover it up, an eighth, eighth of an inch at the most. Now I'll take a little bit of water and put it on top of that. And a, Need a little sprayer too. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side. Or as you're looking at the left hand side, I'm going to put my cabbage seeds in here, put a little dirt on top of that, and I'm telling you what, we'll track the progress of these, and you can kind of watch with me as we go along, and here's our cabbage seeds. All right, I'm gonna come back with one final spray. Just get it nice and damp. I don't wanna overdo it. Got my tomatoes planted. I got my basil planted. I got some cabbage planted. Now that's a good start, but you know what? I haven't even begun to fight. I've got so much stuff to plant. I'm gonna have me a monster garden this year. Every year my garden gets bigger and bigger. And we're gonna cover these up, set them out of light, prepare for them to grow. Now we did have somebody follow us back. Yeah. We couldn't get rid of him. We even, he kind of scared us. Mm -hmm. Our baggage got lost. That's right. And we going to Chicago. And without surely to goodness, if we get this bag back, <laughs> Carl still won't be there. That's right. You named him Carl. But guess what? Guess who showed up? You had to have him, didn't you? Hello, Mrs. Farmer. <laughs> so anyway, here's Carl. I'm going to ask Carl a few questions. Carl, first of all, if you wanted to find some really good recipes, where would you go? Well, I would bypass you and go straight to TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com for more Nikki. That's mm. right. YouTube, hit subscribe, and you'll get all kinds of updates while you have a new show on. Now, when I was a kid, we had marionette shows coming so to school. We and we thought it. they were so cool. Most people might think that's creepy. But when we were kids, that was entertainment. That was they had these huge, They had these huge marionette shows. I found out later they played records with the music. Mm -hmm. And they had four or five people up there with all kinds of puppets doing this kind of stuff. They got this in the Czech Republic, but everywhere we went, they had marionettes. They did. And they are so cool. It was handcrafted. So Carl may be a special guest right. on the show. Now, what Carl failed to mention is the Facebook page. If you chose to be our Facebook friend and we want you to do that, how would you do that? I would hit like. That's all you got to do. Hit like. That's right. And we have a brand new show coming up for you next week. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you everything about it. But we have a new place we're going to be cooking very shortly. So remember, it's all about... Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next Don't week eat. on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. All right, let's card this up. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.